Questions? Sam. <laughs> so the reason why I said everyone yep. is because the, the goal of this of charge is to spread the message of message of Jesus to whoever. And if if that's the case, then it's everyone, right? You, that's why I said that is that is the correct answer. You are right. I don't want to say that you're wrong. You are correct to say everyone. Right? What I'm saying is sometimes. When we say everyone, we don't actually mean we're, we're, we, we, we want to get out there and tell everyone. What yeah. we mean is, I'm just going to say this word because it's the right answer, but I'm not, not actually going to come up with any plan whatsoever to do so. I'm going to say this so I don't have to do it. And can people, we can say it to be lazy. I'm not saying that's what you did. I'm saying my whole point in that is, yes, the answer is everyone. Now, how do we do that? That was the idea. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. But like, how do we do that is basically, like I said before, it spreads like rats with disease. <laughs> Sam had a, had a, 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 a sickening uh, uh, illustration in the other, other Sunday school class this morning. Uh, but yes, and so yes, and again, the gospel spreads by us living out the gospel, but we as a church body are called to exist in some way in Bedford. Um, and I, 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 I do always believe that if we have, as a church body, are gifted in many ways to do things for the, for the, the community, to uh, to clothe those who need clothing, to feed those who need feeding, and to spread the gospel to those, we should be organized with the good things that we have to do so. Um, and so, again, that's the idea here. It's not to say that the gospel isn't spreading through us living our lives as Christians. It's to say we are called to even more than that as the body of Christ. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. By saying, by focusing ourselves on one or two people <clears throat> that we do want to reach, maybe it's one person in a club you belong to, like I belong to Rotary. I've got, I've got one person that I really like to have them join my church. Or, and again, I would also say to join the church, Amen. not not specifically New Hope. I don't care if somebody comes to New Hope or not. It's always nice. I care mm -hmm. that a person is entering the kingdom of God. Yeah. The, uh, but by by even just thinking of it in the sermon and not everything, yeah, that makes it more real. Yes, and I've got a goal for that person, and like in my order. I've met a lot of a lot of people, and Bob tried it mm -hmm. very hard. I, I thought for sure there were a couple of people that were going to come to our church, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Sure. And not like Bob didn't spend time with these people, <laughs> talk to them, and try to get them to come. So it's not always easy, and it's not us either. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess we have to. Hi. Be bold, but we have to remember it's God that's going to be the one that puts that person on. Well, and again, the, what, what, again what, what's the charge here? The charge here is not like, what's the gospel we preach? It is not come to New Hope or get involved in get involved in this ministry in this way. The charge is we are called to proclaim the gospel. And if you believe in your heart and proclaim with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and not raised from the dead, you will be saved. That is the charge of the church. Yes, Peter. Can I give a Merrimack perspective? Please do. And then I know we have something from, from the laptop. Yeah. Okay. What's up? Uh, no, we uh, we tried something. We thought about that. Like when people go fishing, and Christ told his disciples, "You're fishers of men." Mm -hmm. We don't get in a boat and say, "Okay, I want that fish." Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we dangle bait off the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. we see what takes it. And I said, "Wendy, we're going to try something new. We're going to put a sign out from the scripture verse." Mm -hmm. She's like, "You're going to throw eggs in our house." I'm like, "Well, let's see what happens." You know? mm -hmm. Two weeks later, we get a knock on the door. Lady's like, "I've been praying for 20 years that God would put Christians in my neighborhood." Wendy's formed this disciple a part of it because mm -hmm. they had already formed it with seven women that have never heard doctrines of grace and they're just blown away mm. so sometimes sometimes a small thing yeah and we learned this from the church that we're members of is they put a verse on the marquee and we have people there that are saved now that have driven by read the verse and say i'm going to go there someday mm -hmm. it took years but they came in because they saw a verse mm -hmm. so fishers of men really put the right bait on the hook god uses his truth 
Right. So I think if we can speak it, great. But if, even if it's written on a sign in front of your yard, you'll get neighbors who wave at you and you'll oh, get yeah. neighbors that won't look at you. Mm -hmm. But you're doing God's work. So. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, that actually comes back to it as well with, um, again, the goal, <coughs> I should be clear here, the goal is not just zero in all of your efforts on a person. The goal is, I need, we, we need to be thinking about who are the people in our lives and the people that we know are lost that we want to find some way of reaching out to. It doesn't have to, and again, when we do so, it is not, uh, you know, the, the, the goal isn't, hey, look at, look at how great we're doing and look at this community you can be involved in. Again, the goal is fishers of men dangle the bait. What's the bait? The bait's the gospel. Mm -hmm. Declare with your mouth, believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, Christ, raised, God raised him from the dead. That's, that's the dangle. We'll come to you in just a second, Aubrey. I know someone's been waiting it's online. What's up, Becky or Daniel? What's up, Becky or Daniel? um i i was just i struggle with emotion and so this is something that i i've struggled with ever since i came to christ was the difference between heart and intellectual assent i have crap tons of intellectual assent intellectual <laughs> knowledge but how do i know that i believe in my heart Yes, that is a great question. Um, and again, I would say, so actually this, this, this question actually, uh, I intended to talk about it a little bit more. During the new members class, we had a similar question, which was, um, I, and I think it actually comes back a little bit to this. So I have, I have this belief that Jesus, is, that the Bible is true and Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead. But don't you have doubts about that sometimes? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> if, you, if you say no, then you're probably lying. <laughs> or if you've never had doubts, I should say. Um, I do. Uh, and again, actually, I think it was Daniel's Daniel, like Becky actually made the comment in, in, our, in our class, which was the opposite of belief is not doubt. The opposite of belief is unbelief. Doubts are always a part of belief. Remember I said a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about questioning God. We are, never to, we are never to question God in the sense that we are accusing his character, but we are frequently called to ask questions of God. God, how did you do this? Why did you do that? I want to understand. I want to learn. And so if the questions that you have and the doubts that you have are leading you, uh, are, 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 are landing you with understanding your faith more and more, and you're seeking those answers with God, then those doubts are not bad. Those doubts are a part of your faith and your belief. Um, if those doubts are guiding you to say, you know what, none of this is real. I've been living my life alive the whole time and I'm going to live my life. I'm going to abandon the faith completely. That's what we're talking about. Like that's, that's the unbelief. That's the opposite of belief. Now to your question, Daniel, about, um, faith versus intellectual assent. I think this is actually where the works of faith come in if you if you intellectually ascend or assent to the idea that christ was raised from the dead and he is your lord but you read a passage of scripture uh that says i don't know uh Let's say, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think here. All right, so you, you intellectually assent to that. But when you come across a portion of life where you have a choice to either follow what scripture says, follow what Jesus says, or to not, and you choose the not, and you do this all the time, uh, and, and, and this is more than just do what I don't want to do, don't do what I do want to do. You make the decision, uh, I'm going to go this other direction, counter to what scripture says, because I just don't believe that this that, that it's right. Like going the opposite direction while acknowledging I really should be going this direction, that's different. Going this direction because you say this, this, this direction actually I don't think makes any sense or doesn't work. You are not following in faith. That is that you are making an unfaithful action. <coughs> Now, Daniel, I would, I would look at you and I would say, uh, just based on my knowledge of you, and I'm not looking for you to nod or say, oh, yes, you're right, Will, and I'm not, I'm not looking to just blow up your head here, um, but 
uh, when I look at you or look at look at people, and yes, you have the intellectual ascent, you have lots of knowledge about scripture and the Bible and God and Jesus, and you say, I wonder if I truly believe, I would look at you and say, well, based on what I see, the fruits I see you bearing, um, that is to say, you have a passion for sharing the gospel with people, which a person who doesn't actually believe, a person who believes that that's all, that's not necessary, would have no passion for that whatsoever. Uh, you, you have a passion for uh, digging into the scripture and understanding it, not for the purpose of just holding over other people and convincing people that it's wrong, but for digging into it and understanding it so that it can guide your life more. That is an act of faith. That is an act of submitting to Christ as Lord. Um, and so how do I know? How do I know if I truly believe? Am I living my life or trying to live my life based on what God has shown me through Christ Jesus? Yes or no? And again, faith, uh, mistakes notwithstanding, sin that remains in our lives notwithstanding, we all will still sin. We all will still make mistakes. But am I actively seeking to order my life based on what God has shown me through Christ Jesus? If so, brother or sister, I would, I would encourage you that you have faith. I don't know if that helps, Daniel. Yeah, that helps. Thank you. Yes. Um, other questions? I saw Aubrey had one, which I think she's, she's uh, gone away for a moment. Any uh, other? My question oh. was just a random little tiny comment, so it is okay. Those are allowed. Yes, I know they're allowed. It okay, was, all right, that's fine. I don't that's remember fine. what it was anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Your pastor can be verbose, I apologize. Uh, Sam. So when, when basically spreading the gospel, right? Um, when, when spreading through there and, you know, Darn, I lost my train of thought. All right. If it comes back to you, you can always ask me after we're done here. Okay. Let's do that. Any other questions before we go to announcements? Thank you, brothers and sisters, as always. <laughs>